you know, someone can be gaining fat mass through two different mechanisms. It can either be that the number of fat cells is relatively static, but the size of the fat cells getting ever larger, hypertrophy, mm -hmm. or in some people, largely due to a genetic tendency to go one way or the other, but this is a minority of people. There are individuals who even throughout adulthood have the genetic potential to continue to make new fat cells. And that's getting fat through a process called hyperplasia. And in that case, the fat cells stay very modestly sized, but they're, of course, just much more abundant. Well, that person paradoxically has an almost limitless potential to store fat. They, these are the people who go who get fat through hyperplasia who can become fantastically obese, 500 pounds, 600 pounds, yeah. and, and they don't become insulin resistant, and their insulin levels stay quite modest. However, on the other side, where the majority of people fall, their number of fat cells is set. So if the fat cells are storing more and more energy in them due to an abundance of energy and elevated insulin, that's important though. Those two signals are both essential to storing, to promoting fat storage. You need abundant energy and elevated insulin. In the absence mm -hmm. of one or the other, they cannot get fat. You can eat all the energy in the world, and if insulin is down, you cannot store it as fat. You'll be wasting it as ketones. Your metabolic rate will be higher. Um, if it gets too high, then you'll even be peeing out glucose. You cannot store energy as fat if insulin is low. So it is the hypertrophic fat cell that becomes insulin resistant in order to prevent further growth. That's why free fatty acids start to go up. It's the hypertrophic fat cell that becomes pro-inflammatory in order to correct hypoxia and stimulate new capillary growth to those hypertrophic fat cells. Mm -hmm. So some of those inflammatory cytokines will promote new vascular growth. Some are just promoting inflammation and stimulating insulin resistance. So yeah. the strategy has to be to take that big hypertrophic fat cell and shrink it. And you can yeah. shrink it through two different ways, low energy and low insulin or, or low insulin. They're not the same, although one, you know, they tend to bleed into each other. If someone takes their first weight loss journey or fat cell shrinking step, and it's with a low energy approach, usually they're going to start um, fighting hunger. If energy is coming down and they're still insulin resistant, then as they just start cutting back energy, then the availability of energy in the blood will start to drop a little bit because insulin's still high enough in them. And it's going to be hard to shrink the fat cell. They're going to get hungrier and hungrier, and usually hunger wins. So rather than take a low energy approach for the first step, my recommendation is to shrink fat cells, take the low insulin step. And the low mm -hmm. insulin step is kind of what we've been alluding to, which is, you know, control your carbohydrates. You know, don't, don't get starches and sugars that come from bags and boxes with barcodes. Focus on whole fruits and vegetables. You eat them, don't drink them. Prioritize protein. Don't fear fat. Those, but if you're hungry, eat. Um, there is no, there is no hunger that has to come into this, and so it becomes much more sustainable. And as insulin is down, free uh, lipolysis is activated, and the person's mobilizing fat more. They're burning fat more. They're converting it to ketones, which they use for an energy, and they are just dumping from the body in the form of in the breath and in the urine. The ketones are energetic molecules that are just wasted. They don't have to be burned or stored.